The third person in the main text refers to all villains who lack a love brain and do not advocate for love. Before the decree of marriage was issued, I never thought that my husband would be Shue Xiaochong. Although we grew up almost together and both read and played in this palace, we can still be considered childhood sweethearts. It's just that we don't have a heart-to-heart -heart relationship, we don't know ourselves, and we can still be considered as allies when we play. He loves horseback riding and archery, and I have also learned good archery from him. I am good at painting, and he once asked me to paint for him. He is the prince born to the noble consort, and I am the empress's own niece. He is noble, and I am not inferior either. But neither of us thought we would be a good match for each other. Without him, because his mother Zhu Xiliang fully assisted the emperor in ascending the throne, but did not obtain the position of empress. But my aunt, due to the influence of her family, has nowhere to go but sits firmly in the palace. His mother was the Iron Blood Princess of Xiliang, who fought on her behalf and was not inferior to women. My aunt is Wang Baochuan, who has been guarding the cold kiln for eighteen years and once born a phoenix in the sky. Our marriage is really not going to be easy. Keywords of the novel No pop-ups on the Emperor's side, download the complete TXT collection on the Emperor's side, and read the latest chapters on the Emperor's side. Chapter 1 Youth Tour You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Youth Tour Sister, 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 Why Don't You Go, Go There are beauties by the Tay Pool, don't you regret not going? The second princess tugged at Wang Ji's sleeve, using a lot of strength, almost pulling her sleeve off. Wang Ji quickly withdrew her sleeve and said, Good princess, you just go. You're going to pull off my sleeve. If it falls off, it will fall off. Since you are tall now, your clothes are always small. Turn around and ask your mother to make a new one for you. The second princess hugged her arm again and said, Please, go, go. Just the two of us. How embarrassing being caught. If you can ask someone else to come with you, I'll accompany you. What are you doing when your father chooses a beautiful woman? When you're selected, you'll still worry about not seeing her. Wang Ji sighed. Princess Air loves to play, a twelve-year-old girl who loves to see beautiful women and always has an endless passion. No, father cannot choose a few. Isn't it that I can't see the rest? Let me tell you, not only the two of us, but also sister Xianyun will go. I don't know if big sister will go today. Hurry up, let's find a good place to hide. Wait a moment, the clothes have been pulled like this by you. I need to change them. Don't worry, they haven't started yet. You can go any time. Wang Ji shook her head. She is three years older than the princess, although she hasn't reached her hairpin yet, this year is also considered fifteen. It was late spring in March, when the emperor ascended to the throne for the second time in the draft. However, the Dun dynasty did not want any high dot ranking officials in the draft, and they did not come to suffer this humiliation. Most of them are women from the folk and small official families. Wang Ji changed into a pink dress and the second princess was already extremely anxious. The sisters didn't talk much and went out directly. Wang Ji lives in the Xianzhu Palace where the princesses live, not too far from the Tay Pool. Although the Daiming Palace is large, they are not very old and have plenty of strength. In half an hour, it will also arrive. By the Tay Pool, there were shadows on their temples and clothes, but before they could get close, they saw a palace maid dressed in men's clothing waiting. When she saw someone, she greeted them and said, Second princess, Miss Wang, the eldest princess has asked the maidservants to wait for you too. She said she knows you two will definitely come. Instead of running around aimlessly and not finding a good place, it's better to go to the pavilion over there. Wang Ji looked over and indeed saw several people sitting in a pavilion. The second princess became excited and said, Look at you. What did I say? It's not just us, right? Sister Jiao Jiao, hurry up. After saying that, he picked up his skirt and ran away. 
Being pinched by Wang Ji, he said, Good princess, please be careful. With so many people, just run over as a princess. What about your demeanor? When your mother hits you later, don't cry. Oh, oh, my demeanor, walk and walk, said the second princess indifferently. The two of them, accompanied by a few palace maids, passed by gracefully, with a graceful demeanor that always required some attention in front of them. Before the pavilion could even go up, she heard a broken gong voice. Huh, I knew they would definitely come, and this good thing didn't join the fun. Jiang Wenyu, my mother said she can't speak when she changes her voice, otherwise it will be like this in the future, Wang Ji said. Without waiting for an answer from the other party, he greeted everyone with a well-mannered expression and said, Greetings to the second prince, the eldest princess, and all the brothers and sisters. Come and sit down. The eldest princess waved, We just bet you won't come. Yeah, the result is that everyone thinks you must come and there's no way to gamble. Jiang Wenyu looked at Wang Ji and said, Don't lie to me. My cousins have never been like this in their entire lives. Wang Ji sighed and said to herself, Your voice really irritates me. Sister, did you go to the school field again? The second princess went over and sat next to the eldest princess. Yes, you two are lazy. The eldest princess also pinched the second princess's contract. Compared to the style of the second princess, which is still two contracts, the eldest princess is not the hair bun of the Central Plains people. Dressed in a Western Yang style, with a small braid and an improved version of Western Yang clothing, this outfit looks very beautiful, following the style of the previous Tang Dynasty skirt and incorporating some of the essence of Western Liang clothing. The head is decorated with red coral and other objects, which is very bright and lively. She is also like her mother, born beautiful and heroic. The second princess is a pure Central Plains woman with a gentle and lovely appearance, following her mother. A palace man brought tea, dim sum and fruit, and said with a smile, it's about to start. Wait until the empresses and your majesty come. The second princess didn't care much, she had already started looking at the beauty. I just looked at it and sighed, no, big sister, delicate sister, and Xianyun sister are all too beautiful. I don't think they are as good as you guys. Sweet. The eldest princess picked up a piece of dim sum and put it into her mouth. The second princess continued to shake her head with dim sum. I think I may not get married in the future. Although the emperor's daughter does not worry about getting married, what kind of son dot in dot law do I want to find? I will see you every day. Xiliang Tiger patted his chest and said, I, 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 marry me. He was not afraid of being kicked by the second prince and chuckled, Am I not good dot looking? You're not as good as my second brother the second princess hummed. The second brother mentioned by Princess Air is the current second prince, Shue Xiaochong. He is also dressed in Xiliang today. Wearing a bright red improved version of the power suit. A small braid. Black hair even turns blue in the sunlight. On one ear, there is also a small and medium dot-sized ear ring, with a sharp face. Long eyebrows enter the temples, and a pair of narrow and lively eyes are black. The bridge of the nose is high and straight, deep in the human body, and the contours of one's lips are clearly defined. It is indeed good dot looking, but it also shows some coldness. Coincidentally, he is not talkative, and if unfamiliar people see him, they will feel a bit scared. Fortunately, the young companions in this pavilion are all familiar with him, knowing that he is just born cold and easy to get along with. Jiao Jiao, how many second brother have you drawn? You should keep it hidden. We won't stop second sister from hitting you in the future, said second princess. Wang Ji chuckled and said, why do you hit me? When the second prince gets married in the future, I'll pack the paintings I drew and send them as a gift. I'm sure the second prince's consort will thank me happily. She painted beauties with the consent of the beauties, and Xue Xiaochong even volunteered to help him paint for his mother's consort. Sure enough, the second prince has nothing to say about this. As everyone chatted and chatted, 
I heard from outside that Empress Dowager arrived, Empress Dowager Xian arrived, and Empress Rome arrived. In a moment, Your Majesty will arrive. They also have to go over and say hello. As usual, let me start by saying a few words. First of all, the female lead is wearing attire. This dynasty was a fictional one after the downfall of the Tang dynasty, so the rules and regulations were more arbitrary. It was not as strict as the later Song and Qing dynasties in terms of etiquette. Everyone, you, me, and I don't have any major issues. Then, the male lead is a prince, one dot on point one is impossible. If you mind, you can return it. Don't come and argue with me, I won't listen anyway. Furthermore, in theory, this article is a formal drama, and it does not mean that love cannot exist. However, since it is just a matter of thunder and earth fire, I suggest changing it to another one. It is definitely not possible. The position of the male and female protagonists is somewhat contradictory, that is, the male protagonist is afraid that the female protagonist will have too much power and not allow him to rise to power and kill their mother and son, while the female protagonist is afraid that the male protagonist will come back to power and kill her whole family. The aunt of the female lead is Wang Baochuan, and the mother of the male lead is Princess Daijian. The emperor is Xue Pingui. So I must make the following points clear. First of all, the origin of this story is from the Beijing opera Red Brown Lai Ma, and all the subsequent derivatives came from here. It's just a playbook, without a historical prototype. In the Tang dynasty, there was a family of Xue Rengui who was a great general and had nothing to do with Xue Pingui for a penny. Secondly, there is no romantic brain in Red Brown Horse. One by one, it is all about prioritizing interests. Finally, why do I want to write this story? It's because I'm too angry to dig wild vegetables. In the initial story, where did they dig wild vegetables? And when the queen died in 18 days, it seems like what Eileen Chang said, there is no such notebook on the market. In the initial notebook, Wang Baochuan and Dai Zhan respectively managed one palace, which ended. No one died, that's all. If there is a problem, we will make up for it later, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Ant You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Ant Everyone went over to pay their respects, and the emperor smiled and said, I've only seen a few of you from afar. It's true that wherever there is excitement, you can't be missing. Father, we all want to watch the beauty pageant, the eldest princess smiled. Isn't it easy to see? Come on, sit here. It's not clear from afar in the pavilion. The emperor smiled and pointed to one side, add seats to them. Empress Wang sighed and said, everyone is really spoiled. It's rare that you brought Erlang with you. He's willing to join you in the fun, which is considered your great ability. The emperor smiled and pointed to Xue Xiaochong. Xue Xiaochong said with a stern face, I also want to see it myself. Ha ha ha. This is really rare. The emperor laughed uncontrollably. The queen also said, it's hard for this child to say this with a straight face. Consort Xian also joked, our Erlang is the one who never stops talking nonsense. Quickly, the palace attendants brought chairs and everyone sat down. The emperor specifically asked the second princess to sit next to him and waved for Wang Ji to come over as well. Wang Ji smiled happily and said, My daughter is sitting here, you can see more clearly. Okay, okay, just sit there. The emperor waved his hand and said, Take some of the food from here. Settling everyone in, the draft can be considered as the beginning. Most of the ladies below come from the common people, and it is unknown whose children these expensive dressed girls and husbands are from. Just envy everyone. But if others don't know each other, it can still be guessed that those who are wearing Western Liang Hu clothing must be the relatives of the Empress Dowager. Everyone knows that Your Majesty was once the consort of the Western Liang dynasty. Later, the old prince of Xiliang, Yan Jia, became the prince of Xiliang. At that time, Princess Xiliang fought on her behalf and gave birth to two sons and a daughter. 
Later, Her Majesty pacified the chaos in the central plains and ascended the throne as emperor. Eleven years later passed. Princess Xiliang doesn't like clothes from the central plains, so she doesn't wear them often. Her children and relatives are like this. Sometimes wearing Hu clothing and sometimes wearing clothes from the central plains. Queen Wang had been guarding the cold kiln for eighteen years, and when her husband returned, she was already old, so she had no offspring. However, Queen Wang has good moral character and treats all the descendants in the harem as if she were her own. It has been proven that young children always struggle to sit still. Halfway through the draft, everyone started eyeing each other. The second princess seemed to have nails growing under her buttocks and started moving. The emperor laughed and said, whatever you want to do, go ahead. It's not interesting to restrict you. The second princess stood up after a moment and said, thank you, father, thank you, queen mother, thank you, mother consort. Concubine Rome looked at this foolish girl in silence. Then the foolish girl took the lead, and the few young men and women who had just arrived left with a clatter. They have a lot of homework every day, but they also have a lot of leisure time. But now it was time for lunch, and the group went to the princess's place. Ask the palace officials to prepare meals. On a fulfilling day, it wasn't until dusk that Wang Ji went to the Empress's Zhaoyang Hall. The queen has just returned and is drinking tea after removing her hairpin ring. She is already fifty years old this year, and no matter how much she takes care of herself, she cannot withstand the erosion of time. Are you crazy enough? Come here, she affectionately waved at Wang Ji. Wang Ji walked over with a blessing, then sat in front of her on an embroidered stool and said, Auntie. Don't shout, sunburn, in March, what should I do if my tender face gets tanned? Wang Ji leaned on the empress's lap and said, It's okay, I can't get too sunburned. I'm walking so tired. Then stay here. Tomorrow you're going back to the mansion to take a look. Don't walk back. The Xiaoyang Palace is still a bit far from the princess's residence. Wang Ji nodded and said, Okay, okay. Empress Wang had nothing to do, and Wang Ji had been raised in the palace since the age of five. For ten years, she has lived in the palace much more than in the mansion. She is also closer to Queen Wang than her own mother. She came here with memories. When she was a child, she was confused. When she could accurately remember things and think independently, she had already entered the palace. At first, I lived in this Xiaoyang Hall. Then at the age of eight, he went to the Xianju Temple. Although the Daiming Palace is large, she feels much more familiar than in the mansion. Wang Ji smelled the fragrance on the Empress's body, and everyone was about to fall asleep. The Empress woke him up and said, When you're full, you can sleep. If you run a little less during the day, you won't be so tired. Well, I didn't originally want to go. Second princess must see the beauty. Wang Ji stood up and hugged the queen again. Auntie, I'm so tired. Take it. Let's go, go eat. Empress Wang led her hand into the hall. After eating and washing up, Wang Ji slipped onto the queen's phoenix bed. The palace attendants and maids have long been accustomed to it, and upon seeing it, they only smiled and said, Miss, comb your hair. No, no, I'm sleeping. Queen Wang sat in front of the mirror and combed a hundred times before getting on the bed. When she came up, Wang Ji had already fallen asleep. This girl is also fifteen years old, at most one or two years married and still so childish. Empress Wang tucked her in. With you watching, what if a girl is childish all her life, said the palace maid Saiwan with a smile. I'm old, I can't protect her for a lifetime, Queen Wang lay down and waved her hand, obviously not wanting to continue. The next morning, when Wang Ji woke up, Empress Wang woke up early. She is the queen with a lot of palace affairs, and the concubines are coming to pay their respects. Where can she keep sleeping? Wang Ji sat on the queen's bed, rubbing her eyes, and soon someone came to serve her and stood up. In the Daiming Palace, 
Wang Ji's treatment was the same as that of a princess, and sometimes even better than the princess. Your Majesty always likes to say that he mistreated the Empress, causing her to have no parent-child relationship. Therefore, the Empress values Wang Ji, and Your Majesty also values Wang Ji. Whatever the princess has, she has it. Sometimes things are rare, what the princess doesn't have, Wang Ji is the only one. No matter how much the emperor thinks about the Wang family, at least there is no plan to spoil Wang Ji. Wang Jila is good at being a child, and he hasn't been doing it for many more years. After having breakfast with the empress, he took the maid Qin Kei out of the palace and returned to the mansion. The people on the street are only considered to be members of the royal family, even though they are escorted by vehicles in the palace. Miss, I heard that I am going to betroth the second prince. Who do you think it is? Isn't it Miss Xianyun? asked Qin Kei. Wang Ji took off a golden hairpin from her head and rubbed it. It was given by her aunt early in the morning. It looked good, but it was too heavy. How could it be? Sister Guanyin has already married the eldest prince. It's unlikely that Xianyun will marry the prince again. Yes, but the second prince's legitimate consort must not be an ordinary person. I don't know which noble daughter of a noble family it is. Hey! Miss, it can't be you, can it? Qin Kei said. Do you think so? Wang Ji's eyes were blank. The relationship between Queen Wang and the noble consort has always been very good, it's incredibly good. But don't think deeply about everything. As a noble consort, Princess Daijian still holds 100,000 iron cavalry from the Western Liang dynasty to this day. Back then, she devoted all her strength to supporting His Majesty's ascension to the throne, but was unable to obtain the position of Empress. End of this chapter Chapter 3 The Wang Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 The Wang Family Just One Sentence Before you, Wang could not defy the etiquette and rules of the Central Plains, even if her aunt had nothing to do. My grandfather also offended His Majesty back then, with only one false title. The Wang family was a former prime minister, with friends and students from all over the world. The Wang family of the four major families has undergone changes in dynasties and generations, which cannot be underestimated. The eldest son, second son, and eldest daughter born to the noble consort were all children of the emperor when he was still in the Western Liang dynasty they should be respected. But now this world belongs to the people of the Central Plains. I am the niece of Queen Wang and the granddaughter of the Wang family. And the second prince is the son of Princess Daijian. Her eldest son injured his leg six years ago when he went on a military expedition, and since then, he has been acting poorly, making the second prince even more precious. How could this marriage be between the two of them? Oh my! I don't know who the son dot in dot law will be in the future, Qin Kei said with her chin resting on her cheek. It's time to get engaged now. Wang Ji also lifted her cheeks and said, I don't know. It's really outrageous. The master and servant returned to the Wang family like this. The Wang family is naturally warmly welcomed. Visited my grandfather and headed all the way to the back house. Grandmother Chen has been in poor health in recent years. Apart from Empress Wang, Wang Ji's closest person is Chen, followed by her motherly. Grandmother. Wang Ji rushed over with her skirt and hugged her. I miss you. Nonsense. It's been a long time since I last came back. Let me calculate, it's been 28 days, right? It's heartless. Chen poked her head. I study every day, I don't have time. Well, I don't know who it is, go down to Tay Pond to catch fish, Chen said. Why are you so mischievous? Li Shir also chuckled, your majesty has gotten used to you quite a bit. Mother, I don't. Wang Ji acted coquettishly. Grandfather Wang Yun only has three daughters and no son. Her father is an adoptive. However, she and her brothers and sisters were loved by her grandmother. 
Chen is a very wise old lady who has always indulged her children. The Wang family still has three children, born to Wang Ji's second aunt, who has passed away for about ten years. Her daughter and son both grew up in the Wang family. Speaking of this person, it's another matter. Back then, there was a feud between Wei Hu, the husband of my second aunt, and his majesty. Later, he was beheaded. At that time, Aunt Air begged for mercy in various ways, but unfortunately to no avail, and in the end, she ended up feeling depressed. Now, all three children of the Wei family are here. Cousin Wei Ying is 16 years old this year, and the two cousins, one 19 and the other 20.3, are already married. Compared to Wang Ji's treatment in the palace, which is comparable to that of a princess, the empress dislikes Wei Ying very much and occasionally appears indifferent. Therefore, Wei Ying was very disgusted with Wang Ji, and the two of them were not very successful in terms of face saving. After the scene was over, Chen left Wang Ji to speak. Jiao Yang, in two more months, you will be ready to go. I told your grandfather about your marriage the day before yesterday. Do you have someone you like? Chen shook Wang Ji in her arms. No, can't we talk about it in a few years? I feel comfortable living now and don't want to get married. Wang Ji acted coquettishly. She is too shy to act coquettishly towards anyone anyway. In a few years, it's okay. We always have to make a decision first. If we don't make a decision, won't those good men in Chang'an City be taken away? It's your turn, what else is good? Chen smiled. Grandmother, are you coaxing the little doll again? Wang Ji was shy. Chen touched her head and said, How is that Erlang from the He family? You are all studying at the palace school. Either the fourth Lang from the Jiang family is fine, he is one year younger than you, just a few years later. Chen said several things in one breath, basically. They all know each other. Wang Ji suddenly realized that with her identity, she couldn't marry an ordinary person. She knew those with higher status. It's difficult to get started with acquaintances. If you really like it, Zhalu Shaluo, don't you think his braids are pretty? Although he is from Xiliang, he is still in the capital now. As long as you like it, you can also marry him. Don't, don't, don't. Zhalu Shaluo and Xiliang who are two fools who know how to ride horses and shoot arrows. I won't marry them. These two are from Xiliang and also related to Princess Dai Zhan, so they have been followers of the princes since childhood. Indeed, they are all studying together. So, where's your aunt's little cousin? Isn't he also a talented person? Chen didn't mention the Wei family either. This child can hardly get along with the Wei family. That's how my older brother got married. Oh, grandmother, don't worry. Wait for another year and a half, maybe the marriage will come. Wang Ji quickly shook her head, thinking that in a different world, she couldn't escape the pressure to get married. Okay, okay, don't mention it. Our delicate mother is so beautiful, can we still not get married? Chen Shi affectionately touched her face and said, It's just that my grandmother is old and wants to see you have a home. Grandmother, you are old, but not old enough. You have to watch Jiang Yang get married, have children, and have children again. Wang Ji took her old hand and said, Otherwise Jiang Yang wouldn't be happy. Chen is really old, he is seventy years old. Okay, Chen hugged her and gently patted her. After getting tired of the old lady, she went to her parents' yard. Li's half true and half false complaint. If one's mother is not close, no one is closer than their mother. Wang Ji took her hand and said, Mother, don't be jealous. Why don't you kiss? Li shook her head and touched her head, letting her act coquettishly. Sister, have you seen your cousin like that? She's so annoying. Wang Ji's sister, Wang Yang, came over and said, A few days ago, I heard she wanted her grandmother to give her a hairpin. If she didn't give her a hairpin, she wouldn't be happy. If we're not shy, we wouldn't ask her for anything. Don't speak recklessly, 
Li patted Wang Yang on the back. Wang Ji grabbed her sister and ran into the room to talk. Wang Yang is also twelve this year, but it's strange to say that Empress Wang is not very enthusiastic about her. She likes her, but compared to Wang Ji, that's not even worse. Fortunately, my younger sister is not a big deal. She's a demon again. Wang Ji raised her eyebrows. You're not at home, she knows how to do it. A while ago, when my aunt came over, she pretended to miss her and mentioned her mother, which made both my aunt and grandmother cry. Wang Yang snorted coldly, I don't know what's going on. She's always gloomy and feels like everyone owes her a lot. It's okay, she's getting married soon, right? It's easier to get married. What are you arguing with her about? She's so annoying, you're the master, Wang Ji said. Don't you know about her yet? She always relies on her second aunt passing away and considers herself the master. Our father is an adoptive, but she doesn't look up to him. But she dare not do this to you. There is an empress aunt. Wang Yang is not jealous, but very envious of his sister. Wang Ji put the hairpin given by the queen on her sister's head and said, Don't argue with her. I brought you something delicious and fun. Let's go. The sisters went to watch the things. It can be said that Wei Ying's jealousy also includes these things. She also likes beautiful jewelry, dim sum in the palace, but Wang Ji won't give it to her. Pian Wang Yang, that stinky girl, is still young and just flaunts herself every day. Why don't you make her angry? Every time the editor will roast that I started too many people, and I didn't work hard on this book. As a result, when I looked at it. Forget it, there was no shortage. Make do with it, whimpering. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Many Relatives You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Many relatives Wang Ji's father Wang Jing has several concubines, so he also has illegitimate children. Now it happens that three sons and three daughters, the eldest son, eldest daughter, and three daughters are all born to the legitimate wife. Wang Ji doesn't just talk to his younger sister, but when she comes home, her younger sister always comes to see her later. However, compared to Wang Yang, another illegitimate sister has no chance of entering the palace. The sisters talk together and left something for the other sister. Wang Ji will not neglect matters of face. The population of the Wang family is not too complicated, and although the three children of the Wei family are somewhat disharmonious, the old lady feels sorry that they have lost their parents and have more care. Wang Jing and Li Shi can also handle things, so naturally they won't make things difficult for them. As for Wang Ji's father in this courtyard, Li's means are not low, and there are also eldest sons and daughters, so the concubines dare not make trouble. Anyway, Based on the feelings in her 15-year life, Wang Ji herself can be considered a group pet. Although my father and grandfather are not biological father and son, they are not far apart, nephew. Except for the Wei siblings who have some yin and yang, all other relatives treat themselves well. Compared to her younger sister, she has received a lot of love and care. Even the empresses in the palace, although they have a strong tide every day, still like her as the empress's niece. Perhaps there are other considerations for liking it, anyway Wang Ji thinks it doesn't matter. The biggest annoyance nowadays is marriage. Wang Ji usually doesn't think about it, but when she thinks about it, it becomes annoying. Can't we call her thirty years old after this annoying ancient times? Sigh, one month later, it will be my grandmother's seventieth birthday. Sister, what have you prepared as a gift? I told my mother to make a pair of shoes, but she said it's too childish. But my embroidery skills are not good, and I can't make large items. Wang Yang was very worried. Didn't I ask your second sister? Wang Ji said. I asked, she also worries. Her embroidery skills are not as good as mine, Wang Yang sighed. Wang Ji chuckled and asked someone to invite Wang Nong. Wang Nong ranked second and his family is called Ernyang. 
Come and greet Li first before entering Wang Ji's room. Big sister, third sister, I'm here. She is thirteen years old and has a very beautiful baby. Laugh when you meet people, even if it's not from the same mother, it's not annoying to watch. As for the gift from my grandmother, what have you prepared, second sister? Oh my, I was about to say, it's at least my grandmother's seventieth birthday. How could I be careless? I thought to myself, how about making a blanket with my third sister? We're not good at embroidery, but choosing larger flowers would make it much easier. Hey! This is good. It's easier to choose a bigger painting, but it's okay if it's not done well. Grandmother doesn't mind. We're really filial, Wang Yang clapped her hands. What about you, big sister? What are you giving? I plan to paint a good picture. Although I have painted it before, it's not as good as before. This time, I plan to paint a full body portrait for my grandmother, Wang Ji said. That's definitely possible. Big sister's painting skills are praised by the adults in the palace. I'm sure she can paint well, said Wang Yang. Wang Ji smiled and said to herself that I had painted for decades in my previous life. Now that I'm here, I just need to relearn some lines and the like, so naturally my drawing won't be too bad. The three sisters discussed what to give, and then talked about Wang Ji's hairdressing ceremony. In June, it's big sister in hairpin ceremony. It's even more important, and we need to give you something. It's just that we won't tell you what it is now. Okay, anything is fine, I cherish everything. Wang Ji looked at them. Big sister is about to go to bed, should we discuss marriage? She doesn't usually go home, and if she gets engaged, it will be even more difficult to see her in the future, sighed Wang Yang. It's early, there's nothing to worry about. Wang Ji patted her head and said, it's almost noon. Let's go to the main courtyard to have dinner with my grandmother later. I want to have some bad fish. There must be, when the older sister comes back, my grandmother is the happiest. If you like it, it will happen. Wang Yang is confident. That's right, my family always cares about me so much. Just as Wang Ji was enjoying life at home, the emperor in the palace pointed out several beautiful women to the second prince. These women have low status and cannot be concubines, they can only be concubines. The second prince has not yet been crowned as a king, but he is probably about to do so. At most, these women can only become concubines, and if they give birth in the future, they may become children. The second prince's mansion had already been built, and the emperor was reluctant for him to leave the palace, so he said he would marry a prince and then leave the palace to live. It's time to estimate now. The emperor himself also kept a few beauties, but as he grew old, it was not advisable to keep too many. So as not to make the courtiers look unattractive. In the courtyard of Yaoguan Palace, the noble consort collected her silver spear and stood there panting slightly. On the contrary, she was dressed in the clothes of a woman from the Central Plains. She was about to turn fifty now, but she practiced martial arts year dot round and did not look old. I believe your marriage is also about to be decided, but your father did not tell me who it is. Regardless of who it is, it must be a woman from Dun. Empress Dowager Dai Zhan took the handkerchief handed over by the palace maid and wiped her face. Do you have a woman you like yourself? The second prince shook his head. So Ahulu, at your age, even my first man had his leg broken by me. The eldest princess smiled and asked, How many more did you have before you were with your father? Dai Zhan didn't answer a few questions, but only said, Old Prince of Xiliang has no son. I only have one daughter, how many can I have? At this point, the eldest princess remained somewhat silent. Yes, my mother is Princess Xiliang, but now, put it away like that, there's nothing wrong with me now. It's just the marriage between the two of you. She sighed, even if he's a sullen gourd, let's forget about it. What about your marriage? According to your father's wishes, we're going to appoint you as a descendant of a noble family. What about yourself? 
Do you have anyone you like? No. The eldest princess has always had a lack of confidence in front of her mother. If you want to marry Zhalu Shaluo, then you don't want it. A few days ago, the empress praised him for being good. If you don't like him, you might end up going to that delicate girl. Wang Ji doesn't like it either, said the second prince. Dai Zhan glared at him and said, Do you know again? Mother, let's wait for the imperial decree. I really don't have many people I like. How about I marry back to Xiliang? The eldest princess said casually. This statement made Dai Zhan feel a bit moved. As for his son, his consort cannot be a woman from the Western Liang dynasty. Thinking about the eldest son who is not good at his actions now, Dai Zhan's mind flashed with some anger. This son must not have any more problems. Two idiots. Dai Zhan waved his hand and said, Get lost, don't get in the way here. The eldest princess quickly stood up and pulled up the second prince, saying, All right, let's go out of the palace and see Big Brother. The two siblings hurriedly roared out of the palace and went to Prince Qing's mansion. Dai Zhan picked up the silver gun that she had pierced on the ground and started dancing. Now she can't go to the battlefield anymore, but she still likes to wield knives and guns. When the second prince and the first princess were leaving the palace, they met the second princess again. She also insisted on going, so they decided to leave the palace together. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Marriage You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Marriage When Wang Ji was asked to leave, she casually took her two younger sisters with her. It was already afternoon, and she reported to the old lady and took a few family members out, heading straight to the Faixian Tower in the city. The eldest princess and her group are right here. The eldest princess, the second prince, the second princess, and Pei Xianyun, as well as a girl dressed in Xiliang, looked a bit unfamiliar, and Wang Ji couldn't remember who it was. When we went upstairs, everyone greeted us casually. Is it interesting to go home? Thinking you're home, we're going to take a stroll tonight, said the princess. The rules of Dun are basically similar to those of the previous dynasty, but the curfew has been lifted. Only on special days will there be a curfew, and you can play freely on weekdays. This place is very open, and girls can play until night without anyone saying anything. Just allow it from your own parents. Interestingly, my grandmother said I have no conscience and haven't been home for 20.8 days, Wang Ji smiled. It's okay then. Going shopping tonight, won't you be at home tomorrow? But if you don't go back to the palace, mother will be angry, said the second princess. Indeed, Empress Wang's love for Wang Ji is excessive, and if she doesn't see her for a few days, she will become unhappy. Wang Ji approached Pei Xianyun and asked, Who is Yun Yang? It seems like Zhalu Xiaoyu's little aunt. She said she just came to Chang'an not long ago, Pei Xianyun whispered. Wang Ji nodded and said, Is it about marriage? In recent years, a child from a noble family in the Western Liang dynasty has also come to the capital to talk about marriage. It's not that we have to talk about the children of the nobles in Dun, but rather that some of the children of Xiliang live in the capital. Wang Ji peeked at the woman, and she also peeked at her. One mistake caught her eye. The woman laughed and said, You're really good. Looking. Her Chang'an dialect is obviously not very good either. Wang Ji also smiled at her and said, You too, you're really good. Looking. You don't look like Zha Lusha at all. The woman said, He and I are one Ada, not one Mama. Do we call you aunt or sister? Wang Ji asked. Call me sister, call me auntie. She's so old. The girl smiled and said, My name is Zha Luling. I know you're a Jiaoyang. Zha Lusha told me that the best looking one is Jiaoyang. Wang Ji pursed her lips with embarrassment and said, Sister Ling. The streets are bustling, although it's not a holiday, there are many people selling things. Due to the continuation of the four sided trade of the previous dynasty, there are many rare items from various places in Chang'an city. While talking, 
the servant girl of the eldest princess bought all kinds of dim sum. Go straight to the side of the second princess and Wang Ji. The eldest princess also likes to eat, but she claims to be her sister and always eats first for her sisters. Today, we have new sisters. Naturally, we are together. Wang Yang and Wang Nong are not very familiar with these people in the palace, so they are somewhat reserved. But everyone is relatively easy to get along with, and these people don't have particularly strange temperaments. There's nothing to say about children going shopping, just eating and playing. It's not a holiday, there aren't many fun things on the street, so the main focus is on eating. Today, these few people gathered together, only the second prince was a man, somewhat awkward and lonely. Looking at his sisters and sisters eating, he could only take a sip of tea. On the carriage back, Qin Kei began to ponder again, Miss, do you think this Xia Lu Ling is the person who works as a concubine for the second prince? The Xia Lu clan are nobles. I don't think the second prince's consort is likely a woman from the Western Liang dynasty, said Wang Ji. Their little braids are so beautiful, I'll do them again next time. Wang Yang leaned against Wang Nong's arm. Who cried when I took out my hair last time? Wang Nong pinched her face. The hair of a woman in Xiliang is beautiful, just a small braid, which takes a lot of effort to comb and remove. Do you still want it? Wang Nong laughed. It looks great. The younger sisters were arguing, and Wang Ji had already closed her eyes against Qin Kei, feeling a bit tired. It's getting late when I got home. The gatekeeper in the mansion is waiting, and the girl in the old lady's room is still waiting. Seeing that they had returned, the old gatekeeper laughed and said, when the girls wait, the old slaves will all fall asleep. The street is so lively, isn't it? It's lively and lively. Thank you, Uncle Wang, for bringing you delicious food. Wang Ji stuffed an oiled paper bag over and said, let's go. After speaking, he went to pull Qingyao in front of the old lady and said, Aunt Qingyao, let's go. It's not surprising that her mother said she would kiss anyone, but she doesn't care about her mother. Most of the time she comes back, she stays with the old lady. The marriage of the second prince is indeed a concern for many people. The emperor in the palace is leaning on a soft couch and eating dates in the Xianfei palace. Your majesty loves to eat this, especially when it comes from Xiliang. Consort Xian brought him tea and said, eat less, if you eat more, it will catch fire. The emperor reluctantly let go and said, it's time for Erlang to get engaged. It's seventeen years old, waiting any longer will be too late. Consort Xian refused to answer this, and the second prince was not born to her. Hey, when it comes back to this, you won't speak, the emperor shook his head. What's the use of my words? The second prince has a noble status and is the lifeblood of the noble concubine sister. Apart from the emperor, who can decide this marriage? The virtuous concubine collected the dates and added tea to him. Anyway, I have a plan in mind, the emperor waved his hand. Consort Xian has not asked whose family she belongs to. I just have some speculation in my heart. Many people are waiting to see the marriage of the second prince, but the emperor actually had a plan for it early on. Just wait until the draft is over, give him a few women first. Prince Tang, it's not appropriate to have only two maids serving him now. He was also crowned as a king. After Wang Ji stayed at the Wang family for three or four days, the queen in the palace began to think of her and sent someone to call her back to the palace. She originally planned to go back on the eighth day of the Lunar New Year. Today is the fifth day, and there are still a few days left. As a result, on the sixth day of junior high, a decree forced her to return to the palace. The main idea of the imperial edict is that the second prince is granted the title of king and married at the same time. The candidate for marriage is Queen Ji, the legitimate grandson of Grand Tutor Wang. Kneeling in the front yard, Wang Ji's mind was about to explode, completely unable to understand. Under the imperial decree, the Wang family had no other choice but to accept the decree. Wang Yun's old hands took the imperial edict, 
but due to the grace of the emperor, he did not kneel down to take it. Only the younger generation like Wang Ji knelt down. At this moment, the palace attendant smiled and said, Congratulations to you. Our young lady and the second prince have grown up together, and now it's a big celebration. Thank you very much, come and have some tea, Wang Yun smiled. Wang Ji, Chen, Li, and others returned to the backyard. The younger generation congratulated them, and Li was also somewhat happy. Chen waved his hand and called everyone out, leaving only Li and Wang Ji behind. Don't be afraid, Jiang Yang. Grandmother will go to the palace to see your majesty and beg him to take it back. Mother, why is this? This marriage is a good thing. Li was puzzled. What good thing, you don't understand. Chen sighed and wanted someone to come and take care of her changing clothes. Wang Ji hugged her and said, Grandma, calm down. It's no use if you go. When your majesty orders, wouldn't you think you're going to beg? End of this chapter. Chapter 6 No Regrets You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 No Regrets She looked up and smiled, Your Majesty has everything in mind and will not accept it. Will my delicate mother be buried for a lifetime? Chen's eyes turned red. Anyway, I'll go beg. I treated him well back then. Grandmother, don't go. Wang Ji took her hand and said, Don't mention the past. Don't mention it even more for the sake of your delicate mother. Which emperor is willing to listen to him or the story of the beggar? Moreover, the Wang family not only showed kindness to the emperor, but also had grievances. There's nothing wrong with this marriage, I'll just get married, Wang Ji said. Jiang Yang, you are still young. You don't understand what this marriage means. Chen Shi sat down and sighed, the mother of the second prince is a princess of Xiliang. She also has a hundred thousand iron cavalry of Xiliang in her hand. I understand. Wang Ji poured tea for Chen Shi and said, Your Majesty and the adults in the court don't want him to be the crown prince. The Wang family also cannot support a prince who has the ability to be the crown prince. I don't quite understand the situation here but I also know one thing. Your Majesty has your considerations. You. Chen Shi didn't know that this child actually knew so much. But Your Majesty is unwilling, the second prince himself cannot be unwilling. Their mother and son have been wronged now. There will always be a day when they want to argue. What will you do then? On that day, I didn't know what to do. When I arrived, I knew. It was difficult for the emperor to do, grandmother. My aunt had nothing to do, and now you are not allowed to plead for me. Wang Ji was moved in her heart. For the Wang family, it's just a girl, maybe there's another way to marry the second prince. But for her relatives, they couldn't bear to let her get married like this. At first glance, it may not be easy for the future. So she didn't allow her family to offend the emperor for her. My grandmother promised me not to beg. If I knew it was useless, why bother? Not only you, but I also want to tell my aunt not to beg. I am willing to do it. Anyway, I have known him Shui Xiaochong since we were young. Even if I marry him, he doesn't like me, or if he wants to ignore me for many reasons, there will always be me living in luxury. He won't kill me. If he wants the throne, he cannot abandon his wife who is worthless. Isn't that what your majesty did? What if he doesn't love you for the rest of his life? Chen Shi is a smart person, but also emotional. Watching her daughter live a lonely life, she couldn't bear to let her granddaughter do the same. I will be more open-minded than my aunt thinks. Wang Ji crouched down and looked into the old lady's eyes. Grandmother, the Wang family, and there are many others. The Wang family loves me and I am willing to give for my family. Besides, maybe I will live well. Chen couldn't say anything when he met her eyes. He picked her up and hugged her, saying, Jiao Yang, Jiao Yang, grandmother's good child. Li gradually understood a little, just sighed. 
for the lack of closeness between my daughter and myself. When Wang Yun came over, he actually wanted to persuade his granddaughter. He was also well aware that this imperial mandate could not be changed. I thought I would see a crying child, but he also felt heartbroken. Jiang Yang has been sensible and obedient since childhood, and is very good at making him happy. He couldn't bear to complain about the child's grievances. But after all, he is a big parent and cannot just look at whether a child is happy. As a result, he faced the child who still had a bright smile, but instead suppressed all his words. Leave only heartache. The Wang family acquiesced to this relative. After having lunch, Wang Ji quickly entered the palace, which made her aunt feel even more uncomfortable. No one knows better than Wang Ji that her aunt is truly more affectionate to her than her own mother. Upon entering the palace, many palace attendants and maids congratulated her, and after ten years in the palace, everyone naturally knew her. She also nodded with a smile on her face, without showing any emotion. Wang Ji was grabbed by Tsai Wan in the courtyard of the Zhaoyang Palace and said, Miss, Your Majesty has only been away for a while, Empress. Not very happy. You should go in and coax yourself well. If you are also unhappy, everything will be discussed slowly. There is always a way, and Empress loves you the most. Let's take everything slowly. Wang Ji nodded, knowing that Aunt Tsai Wan was also worried about her lack of understanding and crying. Without explaining anything, I entered the inner hall. Empress Wang sat in the light and shadow, and the window edges of the dusk also dimmed. She wore a high bun and beautiful and complex clothes. Just, so lonely. Wang Ji walked over and squatted on the table next to her feet, placing her head on her lap. Auntie, don't be sad, my delicate mother is here, she said Queen Wang looked down at her, reached out to touch her face, her eyes red. Jiang Yang, it's my fault to keep you in the palace. I really regret it. Empress Wang's voice choked up. Auntie, you can't regret it. Wang Ji rubbed against her arms a few times and said, I was raised in the palace and lived a more prestigious life than a princess. She is the most I dot catching girl in the royal court. All the noblewomen in Chang'an envy me. But your marriage. Queen Wang looked up again, the imperial decree has been issued and it is difficult to change. Then don't make any changes, Wang Ji smiled at her. There's nothing bad, I'm willing to. Jiang Yang, why are you so sensible? So foolish. Do you know what this marriage means? Andy hopes you can be happy, not. Queen Wang's eyes turned red again. Wang Ji knew that she was not someone who loved to cry, and she had never seen her cry since childhood. Whether your majesty only comes for meals without staying overnight, or the favored beauty in the harem, she will not cry. It was all because I was confused back then, constantly fighting with my second sister, not convinced, and married him. Queen Wang even said these words for the first time, which broke Wang Jixin's heart. Auntie is so proud. Even though she has never felt the love between husband and wife in her lifetime, she never says she regrets it. Auntie, one cannot easily regret, otherwise the journey they have taken will not be worth it. How sad is that? With an aunt, the Wang family can change dynasties but stand firm. With an aunt, the entire Wang family is here. With an aunt, I have grown up with dignity. Those who have a heart think it's really good to have you. Wang Ji took her hand and held it, so auntie, isn't it just marriage? I really want to. Silly child, silly child, you are too young and foolish to understand what this marriage means. At least my aunt also hopes that you can live a safe and healthy life until old age. Empress Wang hugged Wang Ji and her voice choked up. Wang Ji hugged her back. I really know. I don't feel wronged or sad. I'm afraid you will feel sad. The Wangs have my parents, brothers and sisters, grandparents, and you. You all love me and love me, making me happy for fifteen years. Now it's time for me to contribute to the family. 
I'm not afraid of anything, and I understand everything. Aunt, promise your wife not to look for your majesty again. I have accepted the will, and I am willing to do it myself. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Meeting You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Meeting After all, Queen Wang could only nod, just looking at Wang Ji and sighing. Wang Ji knew that his aunt only thought she was young and couldn't see through these things. But she is indeed powerless. Her position as queen is secure and worry-free, and everyone in the court has no objections. The people are also convinced. She used to be the wife of his majesty, waiting for eighteen years without remarriage. So she entered the Zhaoyang palace and became the queen. What a chaste woman! However, neither the court officials nor the people know how she and his majesty live. During the ten years since Wang Ji entered the palace, when he was very young, the emperor would still stay overnight at the Zhaoyang palace. In recent years, he has only come to dine, sit and talk. A couple got married soon, separated for eighteen years, and then saw each other again. The man was already an emperor. There are also other women and children. How much emotion do they still have between them? After calming the empress's heart, Wang Ji did not leave the palace again. It was already night. She lives in the Zhaoyang Palace, accompanying the empress to eat and sleep. The queen's composure lasted only half a day, and by nightfall she had recovered. Since the edict cannot be violated, then the greatest benefits are required. She will arrange a dowry for Wang Ji according to the princess's specifications. And ask the emperor for a princess's title to Wang Ji. Wang Ji didn't say anything about these. Actually, everything is the same. Once married, she becomes the queen. The second prince has already been granted the title of Lai Wang. Whether it's the princess or not, who will remember? As long as my aunt is happy, she can cooperate and do anything. The next morning, the second princess ran over. After paying respects to Queen Mother, she pulled Wang Ji out of the Zhaoyang Hall and said, Sister Jiao Jiao, are you really going to marry second brother? Yes, I can only follow your father's orders, isn't it? Wang Ji said. That's right, but. It's strange. How can you two get married? It feels like you're just siblings. The second princess was quite conflicted, I didn't sleep well last night, so I can't figure it out. Um, my own siblings are not suitable either. I remember when I first entered the palace, I called your second brother, cousin, and he hesitated for a while and told me not to call me, cousin, in the future. She still remembers Xue Xiaochong, who had a strange accent at that time, telling her with a stern face not to call her cousin. Although Wang Ji was still a naive person, her brain was not clear. I instantly understood. Yes, it's normal for Princess Dai Zhan to have objections to the Wang family, so she stopped calling. She thought that the eldest prince, the second prince, and the eldest princess would definitely not like her, and she estimated that life in the palace would be difficult in the future. How about finding a way to go back to the mansion? The result was that, except for not being allowed to call her cousin, the second prince treated her well. Well, it can't be said to be good, but it's not bad for her. Because she was cute when she was a child, the Xiliang boys who followed the second prince were quite kind to Wang Ji, being careful not to damage her. It is mainly because their own sisters and sisters are tough and tough, which is rare. The older prince didn't argue with her, and in my impression, the two of them didn't talk much. The eldest princess also likes to pinch her hair and face. Then gradually, I grew older and had more friends around me, and everyone became familiar with each other. The problems of the previous generation are not reflected much in their younger generation. Queen Wang is very kind to these children. The noble consort likes to wield swords and guns, and she won't show any displeasure when she sees these children. I have also pinched Wang Ji's face. She had a small bun face when she was a child. Anyway, it's strange. I thought second brother was going to marry Xiliang Yu, said second princess. 
Ziliangiyu is the twin sister of Ziliangu, about 15 minutes older than him. I think so, Wang Ji and Princess Air looked at each other. So. What should I do? What if my second brother doesn't like you? The second princess was worried. Although she is brother and sister to the second prince, she has always liked to follow Wang Ji since childhood and is closer to him. Let's just make do with it then. Silly princess, where is there anything you like or dislike? Everyone just depends on whether the interests are suitable. But Xiliang Yu really likes the second prince. And she could see that it was a genuine liking. She knows the news and will definitely make a scene. Will Xiliang Yu make a child for second brother? asked second princess. Um. I don't know about that. It's also possible. The father of Xiliang Hu and Xiliang Yu was the general of Xiliang. He was one of the generals who followed Dai Zhan into the central plains back then. It is normal for his daughter to marry the second prince, both publicly and privately. However, his daughter being a concubine was somewhat aggrieved. If she becomes a child, she will also be a concubine, not as good as you, said the second princess. Wang Ji could only nod, thinking in her heart whether the second princess was still young. If there really is such a concubine poking at me, then my future life will indeed be difficult. At about the same time, the noble consort frowned and said to the second prince, Your father's decree has been issued, and this matter cannot be changed. You can accept this marriage. The second prince nodded without refuting a word. Jiaoyang has become your legitimate concubine, let Ziliangiyu be your concubine wrongly. You can treat her better in the future. The tone of the noble concubine was somewhat uncomfortable. But after all, she is not the same as before. She knows that the second prince cannot only be close to the nobles of the Western Liang dynasty. You're talking, muffled Gord, the noblewoman frowned. The second prince stood up and said, My son knows. We still have homework, so let's go first. Consort, get lost. My son is leaving. The second prince's expression did not change much. Hikai, who followed the second prince, carefully said, Don't be angry, Lang Jun. The Wang family is also a big family. Miss Wang was raised in the palace from a young age and has a noble status. The second prince glanced at him and nodded, then said, Let's go to the school field. Didn't you say to do homework? Hikai sighed. The second prince is good everywhere, but he doesn't like studying. They are all in the palace and together on a daily basis, so seeing the second prince after marriage is only the third day. The weather gradually warmed up, and Wang Ji came out without a cloak. There are various flowers by the Tay Pool, and now it is an excellent time for apricot and peach blossoms to bloom. So the little companions all came to admire the flowers tacitly, and as long as they were not reading, everyone would play in this palace. There are not many children of the Holy One, but he likes these children who accompany the princess and the prince in their studies. Seeing the boys coming from afar, the second princess began to laugh strangely and said, He 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 he, the second brother is here, sister. In law. She has become accustomed to making strange jokes about Wang Ji as sister. In law in the past one or two days. Wang Ji is also quite embarrassed. She is usually a friend and a buddy, but suddenly she becomes a fiancé A. This is indeed however, he still greeted the second prince according to the previous etiquette. Xiliang Tiger also began to giggle and said, Are you still called the second prince? The second prince has never said a word more and is very silent. Glancing at Wang Ji, he nodded as if he had done before. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Embarrassment You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Embarrassment They have never been polite, and Wang Ji won't just wait for the other party to say goodbye before giving up. The other party didn't say much about the exemption. To be honest, with this marriage, everyone is still a bit awkward. The main reason is that Wang Ji felt a bit embarrassed when he was teased by Xiliang Tiger, a rectal person, and second princess, a child. 
What's that called? She asked Xiliang Tiger in reverse. Xiliang Tiger scratched his head and didn't get married, as if he could only continue to call the second prince. Stop fooling around, go to the school field, the eldest princess waved her hand and said. I was originally going to admire the flowers, but since the eldest princess said to go to the school venue, everyone didn't hesitate. There is a large schoolyard in the palace, right behind the Ziyu Pavilion, which is a popular place. The emperor likes to come, the noble concubine likes to come, the princes like to come, and the princess also likes to come. The other accompanying readers, as well as the ministers who sometimes enter the palace, like many of them. So this place has been built several times, it's big enough to run horses, shoot arrows, and have scenery. It's rare that there was no one at this meeting today. The servant greeted me with a smile and said, Oh, here you are. I congratulate Prince Lai first. Congratulations on your appointment as the king, and congratulations on your engagement with Miss Wang. You are quite clever. The eldest princess smiled and said, Why don't you reward him? The following statement is about the second prince. The second prince only glanced at Hikai. Hikai paid for the reward. Chin Ke also rewarded him. Why don't you quickly release the wild rabbit for me to practice, said the princess. Her palace maid was holding her bow and arrow, but she had been waiting long ago. Yes, yes, I'll go now. The palace maid smiled and went to settle down. Wang Ji's archery skills are decent, but far inferior to the eldest princess. She also has to shoot arrows at the target. Speaking of which, although she has also been taught by a specialized archery teacher, she has learned a lot from the second prince. Because the second prince has been practicing non-dot-stop for the past few years and is also willing to correct his friends. At that time, Wang Ji was weak, but her attitude towards learning was particularly good, so the second prince was very willing to teach her. As for Princess Air, she also sought guidance from her second brother at first, and he did indeed teach her, but unfortunately she didn't study hard. Later on, the second prince ignored her. At this moment, everyone set up bows and arrows, and in fact, the eldest princess took her maid to shoot rabbits. Others are still competing to shoot targets. It's not necessarily that the second prince will win. He also often loses. At least Jalu Shaluo often beats him. Xiliang tigers are better at riding horses. Today, Zha Lusha didn't enter the palace, but He Heng was there. He was also very skilled in archery, and his skills were five to five points that of the second prince. It's really hard to say who won. It's not popular in the palace. Only the prince can be allowed to pass. At least these young companions grew up together from a young age, and it is certain to respect the prince. They always speak without hesitation. But in terms of this effort, I won't even want to. Mainly, Xue Xiaochong didn't like to be let down, and those who let him down were all excluded by him. Wang Ji has not touched a bow and arrow for a long time, and she still lacks strength, but now she can still shoot for a while. The second princess came to make a scene again and said, Second brother, second brother, don't you look at Jiao Jiao's sister. Did she take it right? The second prince looked over and said, Lower your left hand a bit. Wang Ji listened to him and indeed lowered a bit. The second prince has already turned his head and arched, shooting in one go. Unfortunately, Wang Ji's arrow failed halfway and fell to the ground. The second prince handed the bow and arrow to Hikai and said, You haven't practiced for a long time. This is a definite statement, not a doubt. I haven't had time to do this since I've been out of the palace recently, Wang Ji explained. Change to a lighter one, come again, Xue Xiaochong said. Wang Ji agreed and had to ask someone to change to a lighter one, but in fact, she was already using a lighter one. The lighter the bow and arrow, the less powerful it is actually, and the arrows fired are also less lethal. However, for someone who was originally not strong enough, she can still use it. The second princess didn't know what she wanted to see, so she thought her second brother was so silly. A group of people played happily, 
and today's final result was Xue Xiaochong narrowly winning. He Wen Wen smiled and said, It seems that I have been neglecting exercise recently. Second brother He, you are powerful enough, both civil and military. My second brother is not as good at studying as you, said the second princess. He Heng is indeed good at both civil and martial arts. He is on the 16th of this year and is also a dream girl for many women in Chang'an City. Anyway, the Wang family has said several times that they want to tell Wang Ji about this marriage, but Wang Ji did not agree, and the Wang family is not in a hurry. The princess praised me falsely, I still have to work hard to learn, He Heng smiled. As he was speaking, he saw the palace attendant Fei Jishu running towards Xue Xiaochong's palace. He Kai stepped forward and asked, What is Fei Gongren running for? What happened? Fei Jishu gasped for breath and said, Oh my, young man, hurry up and call the second prince. That western Liang Yu is causing a lot of trouble with the Empress Dowager. He Kai clicked and nodded back. After all, he is from Dun and not a nobleman of the Western Liang dynasty. Although he is only a servant and not an accompanying student, he believes that it is better for a girl from the Wang family to be a strong princess, as the Western Liang month is not good. But there is no room for him to say anything bad, and when he comes back, he will say it word for word. The second prince didn't frown, but nodded and said, Let's go. It's not a secret that Ziliangiu likes the second prince, just because she likes him too much and always pursues him, so the second prince is a bit annoyed. It's not about whether he likes Xiliang Yu or not, but a few years ago he was completely clueless and focused on archery and horseback riding. How could he like girls? So Xiliang Yu and Xiliang Tiger were both the same age, but they didn't go to the palace to accompany the princess together. But there are still opportunities to meet, and now no one knows that her heart is all in the second prince. Due to her father's reasons, many people assume that it will be a matter of time before she marries the second prince. As soon as the second prince left, everyone felt a bit uneasy. The eldest princess is still shooting rabbits, not here. Xiliang Tiger awkwardly said, Why don't you two continue to go and admire the flowers? The second princess snorted and pulled Wang Ji away. Running out and turning around, he said, I hate you. Xiliang Tiger scratched his head and said, I'm also afraid they'll be embarrassed. He Heng patted his shoulder and said, It's none of your business. No one knows that the legitimate children of the general of Xiliang looked down upon each other. Although they were born in one child, Xiliang Yu and Xiliang Tiger were just like enemies, and neither of them liked each other. In the palace of the noble consort, Xiliang Yu was dressed in bright red Xiliang clothes and sitting wiping tears. The noble consort felt a bit helpless and had nothing to say. She had also tried to persuade her. As soon as Xue Xiao rushed in, she felt as if she had been saved and said, Come on. Before Xue Xiao Chong could speak, Xiliang Yu stood up and said, Second Prince. She called out, but didn't know what to say. The decree belonged to His Majesty and she knew she couldn't change it. Father doesn't agree with her continuing to like the second prince, but how can she change her liking for someone? End of this chapter Chapter 9 Children You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Children The noble consort only said that she would seek the will and ask her to be a servant for the second prince, but she was very aggrieved. Even though she had already fallen in love with the second prince from an early age, it was clear that Wang Ji had no intention of him. Why have I become a child now instead? She, Wang Ji, actually became a queen. She never considered becoming a concubine in Ziliangiu. Besides being the concubine under Wang Ji's command. She has always had no feelings for Wang Ji, and usually just thinks she is delicate. Everyone makes her feel less delicate. Now when I think about it, I feel disgusted everywhere. If it weren't for her, Wang Ji, having an empress aunt, Wang Baochuan, how could Princess Daijian not be the empress? The Grand Princess of Xiliang is now just a noble consort. The eldest prince was disabled, and the second prince is not yet the crown prince. 
it's all her Wang's fault. Now that Wang's daughter has come to infect the second prince again and become his legitimate wife, she really hates people. How could she be willing to serve as a companion for such a person? But if she is not willing, even this opportunity is not available. Even if she hopes Wang Ji will die, it is not an easy thing. After all, she is loved by countless people and it is difficult to make her die. I have already said that if your father comes tonight, please order Ziliangiyu to be your servant. Dai Zhan looked at his son and said. What she means is that after everything has been said, it's not within her control why Ziliangiyu is still crying. If you don't want to, there's no need to ask for an order, said the second prince more directly. He certainly knows what marrying Ziliangiyu means, but if Ziliangiyu doesn't agree, he also has other ways. At least originally, the general of Xiliang was a loyal minister of his mother. There is no need to marry his daughter. Second Prince. How could you say that about me? I, Xiliang Yu, will marry you in this lifetime. After saying these words, Xiliang Yu hit her face and ran out. Dai Zhan sighed and said, I'm also obsessed. What do you say? The second prince sat down and said, Listen to my mother. I really did something wrong, giving birth to you, this stuffy gourd. Your father asked you to marry Wang Ji, and you have no objection. I called you Nashi Liangyue, and you have no objection. You don't have a girl you like yourself. Dai Zhan sighed. The second prince looked at her and said, No. After thinking about it for a moment, he would definitely be scolded for answering like this, so he said, Father's will cannot be violated, so marry Wang Ji. She is also quite good. Xiliang Yu is the legitimate daughter of the Xiliang general and is highly favored. If they have no objections, I have no objections. Dai Zhan said, If you don't have any objections, that's it. Your royal mansion has been under construction for a long time and is about to be completed. It's up to you to decide what to do inside. Your father won't restrict this matter. But since Wang Ji is going to be your wife, the Empress won't ignore her. I think there will be more time to come up with ideas. You can handle it yourself. Let her be, Xue Xiaochong thought. Wang Ji grew up in the palace from a young age, and the Empress loved her like jewelry. She has everything that the princess has, and she also has everything that the princess doesn't. The queen will definitely arrange a lot, he has no objections, which is also a good thing. You are also old, and I don't say many things. You understand in your heart. The one born to consort Xian is nine years old. Dai Zhan's face was a bit cold, your father loves consort Xian. Xue Xiaochong glanced at his mother again and said, I understand. Xu Fei is also six years old, so we shouldn't underestimate her. Dai Zhan said calmly. You understand what I mean, I don't want to keep saying those things. I know, Xue Xiaochong nodded. Don't worry, mom. Not to mention anything else, it's silly Angiyu. This girl has a violent temper. She's also one of your favorites. In the future, getting along with Jiaoyang may cause a lot of trouble. Jiaoyang is very weak, can she withstand it? If she is bullied or wronged, the empress will definitely be angry. Dai Zhan frowned and said, I can't bear to see it. Xue Xiaochong wouldn't think so, would he? Wang Ji is not that weak. But as soon as he thought it would be troublesome to explain, he said, I understand. My nephew is like a mother. Dai Zhan knows what his son means, I know, I will pay attention. You go, I meant to keep you to eat but now I feel like I can eat on my own, he waved his hand in frustration Xue Xiaochong stood up and said, yes. As soon as he left, Dai Zhan scolded, little beast, when I gave birth to him, I was the fastest. Did I leave my mouth behind? I've been like this since I was young. I'm his mother, at least I know his intentions. When we get married in the future, will we do the same? Hua Ying smiled and said, why is Empress so angry about this again? It's been many years now. I've been watching our second prince like this for a long time. 
don't be angry, how bad is it to be angry with you again? On the other side, Princess Air and Wang Ji sat in the pavilion by the Taiha pool. The second princess leaned on the railing with her chin propped up in both hands and sighed, they are so annoying, Xiliang Yu is so annoying. What are you bothering? At a young age, you don't understand anything, don't bother yourself. Wang Ji chuckled as she patted her arm. You're happy, you can wait until you get older to bother again. You call me young before you even reach the age of hair. Second princess snorted. Anyway, don't be unhappy. There's nothing wrong with it. Ziliangiu will definitely be unhappy if she likes your second brother so much. If it were me, I would also be unhappy, Wang Ji said. If it were you, would you also make such a fuss? But what's the use of making a fuss? After all, it's a decree, sighed the second princess. If it's me. If it's me who has been liking someone for so long, and they don't even express their liking for me, then they don't like him, right? You're right. In the future, who will I like? If the other party ignores me, I won't like it anymore. I won't marry him either. The second princess squinted and said, I want to marry someone who likes me as well. Wang Ji nodded, but there was sadness in her heart. Where would it be so easy for people like them? Marriage cannot be decided by oneself. Especially for the marriage between the princess and the prince, how can we just say whether we like it or not? However, the second princess is still young, so it's good to ask her to long for a few years. One day, she will see it clearly. Why tell her now? Second princess. A palace maid came not far away. Greetings to second princess, Miss Wang. Princess, the empress asked you to go back and said that the palace maid who was tailored for you has arrived, waiting for you. The second princess is growing fast now, and her clothes need to be made after a while. Oh, let's go then. Are you with Sister Jiao Jiao? I don't want it, you go ahead. I'll take a look at the flowers for a while and then go find my aunt. Wang Ji waved her hand. Then don't feel sad staying by yourself, said the second princess eagerly. No, you go quickly. Don't ask Empress Rong to wait. Wang Ji waved her hand. The second princess nodded and went. Qin Ke smiled and said, Second princess cares most about you. Yeah, she's the one who's the least caring, Wang Ji nodded and leaned on the railing like the second princess, watching the water birds flying on the lake. The master and servant were talking when they saw someone approaching not far away. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Do you want begonia? You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 10 Do you want begonia? Qin Kei placed her hand on her forehead to block the sunlight and said, Ah, it's the second prince. Wang Ji stood up and looked at the person coming straight over. As she approached, she gently bent down and said, Second Prince. Hmm. Shue Xiao Chong responded. I thought it was just passing by, but he also came up. Wang Ji was a bit surprised. It used to be when we were alone, but now it feels so strange. Qing Xue's eyes rolled and she said to He Kai, He Xiaolang, I want to go pick flowers. The magnolia is too high to reach, can't you please? He Kai nodded and said, Okay, okay, let's go now. Originally, Dun followed the customs of the previous dynasty and did not have the strict rules and regulations of later generations. Although the master is the master and the slave is the slave in the palace, we usually get along as friends. Moreover, the founding of Dun has only been around ten years, and there are also masters from Xiliang in the palace, so the rules are very relaxed. You, me, and I are all normal. Qin Kei grew up in the harem with Wang Ji from a young age, and naturally the same happened. At this moment, the two of them ran away, which made Wang Ji feel embarrassed. She had no choice but to sit down and think to herself that the second prince didn't like to talk. She needed to open up a situation. Unexpectedly, the second prince himself said, Xu has sent a lot of crabapple. Do you want it? 
This statement left Wang Ji stunned for a moment. Ah! Begonia, Xue Xiaochong looked at her and repeated. It must also be Wang Ji. We have been together since childhood, and if we were someone else, we would have to go blind. Oh, did the second prince say that the Sichuan region has brought crabapple trees? Nowadays, crabapple trees are not the ones of later generations. There are still few crabapple trees today, some of which are in the south, in places like Sichuan. It cannot be said that many are precious, mainly because they are rare in Chang'an. So it can be considered as a tribute. There is one plant in the palace, which used to be abundant, but it was not able to sustain itself. Hmm, do you want it? Xue Xiaochong asked patiently. Do you mean it's planted in the Lai Wang mansion? Wang Ji asked. Xue Xiaochong nodded. Yes, Wang Ji laughed. How beautiful the crabapple is. Can we have an extra one? Xue Xiaochong nodded and didn't say much. Is the Lai Wang mansion big? I heard my aunt say it's not small, Wang Ji said. What else do you want? Xue Xiaochong asked again. All right. Wang Ji smiled and said, the peonies in the palace are about to bloom. Do you know if the palace has them? It can be planted. Nowadays, there are also many peonies in Chang'an. The peonies in Luoyang during the previous dynasty were very popular, and now there are also palaces in Luoyang. However, the emperor didn't go much either. Wang Ji has only been there twice and never forgets the peony garden. There are also two peony gardens by the Tay Pond, which have not yet bloomed, but the flower buds have already grown. Do you have any flowers you like? I haven't even heard you say you like any flowers. I just know you like to ride horses and shoot arrows, dance with knives and guns. Lai Wang Mansion, there should be a big school field, right? Wang Ji asked. Xue Xiaochong looked at Wang Ji with a smile on his face and thought, she's really good dot looking. I like apricot trees. Wang Ji's eyes widened slightly, and then she covered her lips and burst into laughter. The second prince doesn't like apricot trees, he likes to eat apricots. There should be more varieties in that mansion, Wang Ji said. Hmm. Xue Xiaochong nodded. The painting of a lady I drew for you last time is ready. I'll take it to the palace school to give it to you another day, said Wang Ji. Hmm. Xue Xiaochong continued to nod. Anyway, in recent years, Wang Ji's level of painting has been improving, so Xue Xiaochong has not stopped asking her to draw things. Usually it's for the noble consort. Wang Ji doesn't care, it's just practice. Sometimes, if you don't know what to draw, just draw what others want. Wang Ji suddenly became playful when she saw Xue Xiaochong and said, Has the second prince ever thought that you and I would become a couple? Xue Xiaochong pursed his lips and said, No. So. Didn't you refuse? We've always been friends, right? I remember when I was very young, I went to the palace and called you cousin, but you didn't even allow me to. I thought you hated me at that time, Wang Ji said. No, Xue Xiaochong said after thinking for a moment, I don't hate you. When Xue Xiaochong was a child, all his friends around him changed. Originally, when he was in Xiliang, he was also accompanied by a group of people. Just changed people, and the palace is not very familiar with them. My mother hasn't seen me for over a year. Ah has achieved his father's throne. He is very uncomfortable. The biggest problem was his accent. At that time, he was constantly corrected for his accent and had a bad temper. But he still remembers why Wang Ji was not allowed to call her cousin at that time, not because he disliked her. It seems angry. At that time, Wang Ji was dressed in a bright yellow outfit, with her hair tied into two small bags and tied with red ribbons. White and tender, with a face like a bun, very soft. How could he have been so soft as a child back then? He saw many people pinching her face and giving out gifts, but for some reason, he didn't allow her to call her cousin. 
I always think my cousin is very strange. Maybe that's what she called her big brother, right? Yes, she was also called big cousin at that time. Big brother nodded. Shue Xiaochong had conflicts with his older brother at that time, mainly because he and his sister were left in Xiliang for a long time, while his older brother kept following his mother. So when he got angry, since big brother wanted to accept it, he shouldn't accept it. The smile on Wang Ji's lips didn't stop, the second prince anyway, people who are not familiar with him cannot say three words to him. He is very silent, but if you say a few more words, he won't leave impatiently. Anyway, if Wang Ji communicates with him more, he will know. As long as you don't keep saying things that he hates, that's all. I don't know what the second prince thinks about Ziliangiyu, Wang Ji decided to ask clearly. Auntie said she would be my child. Xue Xiaochong didn't hide it either. Well, that's good too. Wang Ji nodded. The two of them also talked for a while, and Qin Kei and He Kai also returned. Qin Kei held a bunch of flower branches in her hand, but none of them were the magnolia she had mentioned. Wang Ji stood up and said, It's getting late. I'm going to the Xiaoyang Palace. The second prince should also go and have dinner. Hmm. Xue Xiaochong sat in place and glanced at Wang Ji. Wang Ji walked away with Qin Kei and poked her head, What are you doing? Create opportunities for me and him. It's not like we just met. We've known each other for so many years. Oh, that's different. It used to be before, but now it's an unmarried couple. How about it? Has the second prince confided in you? Qin Kei was excited. You idiot, do you think he has that temperament? He told me that Xi Liang Yu is going to be his child. Wang Ji deliberately said. Ah. It's really annoying. I really like her, sighed Qin Kei. All right, don't talk nonsense. I'm hungry and I don't know if there are any quails to eat today. I want to eat them. There must be. Qin Kei chirped, if the girl likes it, there will be. In the pavilion, He Kai didn't talk too much like this, he just glanced at the second prince and chuckled. End of this chapter